Well, new at five, an update to a story we've been reporting on. It's about a neighborhood that's become quite the haven for illegal dumping. At one time, there were plans in the works to redevelop the Cotton Mill Village section, but they never came together. Fox 2 News investigative reporter Brendan Kirby now joining us here in studio. And Brendan, tell us what went wrong here. Well, Byron and Lenise, the heart of this issue revolves around money, financial problems on the part of some who have tried to transform the area, and a lack of resources at the government level. Pritchard Mayor Jimmy Gardner vowed in May to crack down on illegal dumping in Cotton Mill Village, and he talked about tearing down abandoned houses and replacing them with new construction. As I found out earlier this month, dumping is still a big problem. Today I saw some progress. Tires that had been blocking one of the roads were gone but there's still plenty of debris. As for those larger construction plans, the story is more complicated. Jesse Cooley, one of the few remaining residents, recalls someone at one point offering money to his neighbors to sell. He gave them about $1,000 to move out, you know, so they could, uh, they were going to tear these houses, all these houses down and they were going to rebuild them. I thought maybe he was going to buy mine too, but he never come back. Property records show that Calvin Gill Construction in Whistler owned most of the properties in 2016, but the company filed for bankruptcy protection before it could make any improvements. A Florida-based partnership called Precious Estates then foreclosed on the properties. Norman Weinstein, one of the managers of Precious Estates, didn't want to go on camera, but he tells me he wanted to build garden-style homes for low-income residents. He says the Pritchard Housing Authority, however, didn't have any Section 8 certificates available. Without those, he says, he couldn't get financing and the project died. Weinstein also says the city of Pritchard didn't follow through on its commitments to beef up police presence and remove garbage. He said, quote, we spent a lot of money cleaning up the site. The city was supposed to assist us with some things, which they were never able to do. After weeks of trying to talk to Mayor Gardner, he responded to me by text message. He says, quote, the city will continue to do all it can with the illegal dumping, not only in Cotton Mill Village, which is privately owned, all across the city. The Pritchard Housing Authority says it relies on federal money for housing assistance, but it isn't enough. Zalika Boykin, the executive director, says there are still about 1,300 people on a waiting list for Section 8 vouchers. It's a problem all over the state, says Russell Bennett, executive director of the Low Income Housing Coalition of Alabama. The federal subsidy will allow for that buy down of the unit to make it affordable to families. And so in Alabama, one of the things that we tend to rely on is our federal resources, and there's usually not enough federal resource. I just talked to Marshall Hunt, the chairman of the Pritchard Housing Authority. He says the agency's focus has been moving public housing residents to houses on housing vouchers. He says the Cotton Mill Village project is a project that has not been on the agency's radar. Reporting live from the studio, Brendan Kirby, Fox 10 News.